Welcome back, scholars. In our last lesson, we introduced two key angle and arc concepts, specifically central angles and inscribed angles. Today, we're going to extend our discussion of inscribed angles and look more generally at angles whose vertex lies on the circle. Let's get started. As we saw previously, the inscribed angles theorem holds that the measure of an inscribed angle will be exactly half the measure of its intercepted arc. We looked at three possible scenarios. On the left, the case where one of the angle's rays passes through the center of the circle. In the middle, the case where the center of the circle lies between the angle's rays. And finally on the right, the case where the center of the circle lies outside of the angle's rays. No matter how the situation plays out, the theorem remains the same. The intercepted arc is twice the inscribed angle measure, or put another way, the angle is half the intercepted arc. Let's look at some of the other implications of the inscribed angles theorem. A corollary is an additional factor theorem that is logically connected to an existing theorem. In other words, these are the additional facts that are true because of the inscribed angles theorem. First, on the left, we have two different inscribed angles, one in blue, the other in red. They both intercept the same arc. That means that the blue and red angles are congruent. Next, in the middle, we have an angle inscribed in a semicircle. Since a semicircle is 180 degrees, the angle which intercepts the semicircle must be half of 180 degrees. That will be 90 degrees. That means that the diameter of the circle can be drawn as the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That right angle will be the 90 degree inscribed angle itself. Pretty cool. Last, on the right, we have a variation on the very same concept. Here we have an inscribed quadrilateral, meaning its vertices are all resting on the circle. I can draw a diameter between point S and U to create two right triangles. After doing so, we can easily see that opposite angles, such as R and T, are supplementary. In this case, 90 degrees plus 90 degrees equals 180. Supplementary angles, of course, add up to 180 degrees. Now let's extend the possibilities a bit further. This time, I have a line drawn tangent to circle E. A tangent line intersects the circle itself at exactly one point, the point of tangency. In this case, that point is H. In blue, I have an inscribed angle, FHD. And there's a diameter here drawn, DH. Here's what we'd like to discover. How is this angle, FHG, related to this arc, FGH? Let's add a few details. We're told that line JH is tangent to circle E, which means by definition, the tangent line will form a right angle with the radius drawn to the point of tangency. That will be EH in this figure. Let's call angle FHJ X. We already know we have a right angle overall, so that means I can label DHF as 90 minus X. This also means that arc FD will be twice 90 minus X. And since DFGH is a semicircle, the entire arc on the left side of the circle is 180 degrees. We have 2 times 90 minus X plus arc FGH equals 180 degrees. If I expand this out, I have 180 minus 2X plus arc FGH equals 180 degrees. I'm going to start by solving for arc FGH. In this case, I end up with arc FGH equals 2X. Hey, that seems familiar. The intercepted arc is twice the measure of angle X. I could solve instead for angle X. In that case, I'd get one half of arc FGH equals angle X. Hey, this is the same as the inscribed angle theorem. Let's practice two more examples together. On the left, I'm told that major arc PMQ is 212 degrees. I'd like to find PQS and also PQR. Note that there is no radius or diameter drawn this time. No matter, I know that the arc measure will be twice the angle formed between the tangent and the chord. Or, put another way, the angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So 212 degrees divided by 2 equals 106 degrees. Let's find the other angle. Well, we have a few ways to handle this. Very easily, we could recall that the sum of the two angles along the tangent will be 180 degrees because it forms a straight line. 180 minus 106 will be 74 degrees. One more example. On the right, I want to solve for angles X and Y. Let's start with angle Y inside the triangle. Remember from one of our corollaries that a diameter drawn to the endpoints of an inscribed angle makes a right triangle. The inscribed angle L, J, Q will be 90 degrees. The sum of all three angles in a triangle will be 180. So 
180 minus 90 minus 35 equals 55 degrees. To find angle X, let's think about that first corollary, the one that states that two different inscribed angles that intercept the same arc will have the same measure. The inscribed angle Q intercepts the same arc, J, L, as angle X, so they must have the same measure. That means that X equals 35 degrees. That wraps up our discussion of theorems for angles whose vertex lies on a circle. Next time we'll look at angles with vertices inside or outside of the circle. Thanks for watching.